so those are the tentacles, and then the mouth oh, is in the center. The oral disc. Okay, the mouth is in the center. So where's the oral disc? So it's this feature here. So this is the oral disc. So you think of it as like a sphincter muscle. Okay. Essentially, right? Because then that's the mouth. The mouth is just an opening. And where does the mouth lead to? Pharynx. Pharynx, right? So you can see how rough this is. You can tell that that's the pharynx. Um, and on the pharynx are they going to be the siphonoglyphs, right? Which are all these riffle, ruffles and ridges, right? And then we get into all of this fun, nas like just fun, funness and wonderful stuff. So is that right? a retractor muscle right there? This is right here. So you can see the muscle is way different from the septa. Like the septa are these thin folds, whereas the muscle are bands. Like this is a muscle band right here. This is that same muscle that was cut, okay? Um, and then all of this are going to be the acontia on the septa. So the septa are these little flappy things kind of throughout the rest of the body, right? So most of the septa that you're going to see are going to be primary. These really short ones down in here, this is going to be a secondary, and then I don't even know if we can see a tertiary at this point. Tertiary is probably really deep, like this guy right here. So remember on the cross section, these primary ones, these really big ones, that way, these really big ones are going to be very obvious because they're going to go basically from the body wall to the center. Okay, the tertiary ones, sorry, the secondary ones are going to be much smaller and they're not going to reach as far from from the body wall, right? And then the tertiary ones are going to be really, really small. They're going to be really close to that body wall. So you got to think about that slide, think about that image, that cross section, and where they reach and where they originate from. Um, so we did the oral disc, the mouth, the, siphon um, the pharynx, right, down here in the si um, siphonoglyphs on the pharynx itself. Um, On this particular guy, I believe these are the gonads, right up in here. Okay, and the way that you can tell the gonads, gonads are going to be closer to the pharynx, whereas the contia are going to be down lower, which makes sense if you think about it. Gonads, remember, they're going to shoot out the food they want to stay down lower. All right, so that's why the, all of the acontia and everything are going to be down lower. And then what is this structure called? Fetal disc. The fetal disc. Right. So we can't, so the tr retractor muscles, right, they're going to be all throughout, like this guy here, this one here. There's probably one back here. And there's probably another one under here, right here. So they're just going to be throughout. So what did the septa do again? So the septa, they're just going to separate, they're going to add surface area and, add, and separate the gut. Remember, so if you think about it, think of our gut too, right? So this guy is essentially a tube, right? If I just have an empty tube with minimal surface area, my chances of readily absorbing that nutrient that I take in, that food, it's going to take forever, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not going to be able to process it or use that energy. I'm going to probably expend more energy trying to process it than actually and take it in. But if I have a lot of folds on the inside that increase that surface area and that give me more digestive power, mm -hmm. I'm going to process that food a heck of a lot quicker, mm -hmm. right? So that's what those things are going to do. Is it's going to help provide surface area into the gastrovascular cavity. So that's the acontium right there? Well, the acontia are little stinging cells okay. on the septa. So what's this called again? So the acontia are down here. Mm -hmm. That's what like a lot of this stuff is, mm -hmm. right? And then the acontia are on these little septa that you're seeing. But the septa are going to run the full thing. Okay. If you look at, I don't have the, I don't flip that one over, I think. Yep, so that right here, I've, septa is the same thing as the mesentery. I prefer septa because I think to me it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. um, so they, all, there you go. It just partitions it out, causes outfolds of the gastrodermis, nosoglia, all of those things. And then the acontia, which are a lot of these little things down here, mm -hmm. the little gooey brown stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember, gonads are up here. These mm -hmm. are the acontia. Mm -hmm. um, 
they have the ninety bearing threads that extend from the base of the sentia, and they they hang in the gastrovascular cavity. So you can almost think of these as like these guys are doubly armed. They've got the tentacles on the outside mm -hmm. that have some nidae bearing properties, and then they've got stuff inside their gut. So that prey doesn't stand a chance, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it could be defense, it could also be subduing the live prey that enters the cavity. So there's a lot of things that they'll use. So this right for. here is the gonad. This right here, these guys. Hmm. Which, it all looks the same. <sighs> so there's more right here. So see how that different that looks from here? Mm. <laughs> <laughs>